Hey guys, today we're talking transition from university strength and conditioning coach to owning your own facility and doing more in the community. And so make sure you guys are already subscribed, set up for episode 60 of the Strength of America podcast. Really, it's 60? Six is my favorite number. This is number six, is it? Yeah. Of America podcast. All right, guys, welcome back. Bob Davis with Bobby. And we're lucky enough to have Bobby's strength and conditioning coach from Colorado Mesa University when he went to school up there to wrestle, Coach Linscombe. Thank you very much for coming on out today. LTI, he's here uh, from Grand Junction for our nice weather, which actually it's rainy and cloudy down here in Phoenix. So <laughs> a little chilly, yeah. we could have a little nicer for him, but. Uh, hey. Thanks for I appreciate out. you guys having me. Yeah. That's for sure, man. Yeah, that's for He's sure. He's going to talk a little bit more about, you know, he was a strength conditioning coach, but Bobby was up there at that time during wrestling. And actually, Bobby's last year got to intern with him and learn a little bit more, too, about strength training from somebody other than listening to me out there. See if, <laughs> see, test, test, see if I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> so I got a couple of calls during that time, which was great. Uh, coach, how long were you there? And how long have you actually now transitioned into your own facility? I was at Mesa for eight years. Um, okay. You know, my path there was a little bit different. I went and uh, did personal training at a, a large gym in Denver for about two years. Um, went to like a little bit more of a, a niche group at a smaller gym. And then I did pharmaceutical sales for two and a half years. Oh, okay. Then I went okay. back to training. And then, you know, I eventually uh, ended up in Junction again. And, uh, you know, that's when the they had their first ever strength conditioning coach position open full time. So I was uh, lucky enough to get that position, spent eight years doing that. And then, uh, you know, now we've been with LTI now for uh, almost two years now. Yeah. And so this will, yeah. uh, this summer will be our second or third, third summer. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. I think the first time we came second out when Bobby summer. went up there at the beginning of it for the first year, got to meet you and see the facility and then also the transition, how you, grew that program and went quite a bit too. But then I was excited to see when you transitioned out of that into doing more and having your own facility and building and getting that stuff set up was pretty fantastic. To yeah. You know, kids. I went through a lot of great experiences at, at Mesa. You know, we got to design a new weight room, you know, did a huge weight room in, renovation um, where they actually demolished the basement of the building, you know? And so that was pretty incredible to watch, you know, and my support over there through the years was pretty good, you know? Um, but it was time to leave. My family was getting old, bigger. My girls were getting bigger. Um, I needed to have a little bit more flexibility in my schedule. And, you know, I think, um, overall my desire to make a better income, but also I see a big old hole in youth, to middle school to high school athletes that is I, to me it's I mean it's scary yeah. I think we're gonna have some major you know issues not not necessarily obesity or but more orthopedic issues you know we talked about that at lunch and yeah. I just think that uh, you know I watched my little girls do soccer and do stuff and I just started thinking that if if uh, you know an eight-year-old can understand how to do a game of soccer then they should be able to understand how to do some type of training you know and and so that's where my mindset started going with it and uh, you know before I started in Mace my goal was to work with high school kids but I, I really opened me up to the younger age watch my kid my daughters go through sports and realize the need <clears throat> that these kids aren't aren't doing I mean yeah. parents aren't most there aren't doing it um, and so that's where I uh, felt like I needed to be. Yeah, and that's exciting. I think that's why when I started the Strength of America, and this is way back in 89, our thing was thinking, of course, I was at the University of Nebraska at that point, but we saw these kids coming into the school that here we are, a freshman in college. We're having to still teach them how to squat and clean mm -hmm. and basics, which yeah. should have been fundamental already junior high and high school. Now, I know this was 80s, so that you know a lot's changed since that time, but we also still know, even now, there's not too many of the high schools and junior highs are still doing the correct stuff that we need to. A lot of them are overwhelmed. They're trying to do things. But I knew when I was at Red Mountain, we had 70 kids or better in a weight room. Yeah. It's tough to do all that. But the only way we got around it is we actually taught our athletes to become mini coaches. Mm -hmm. So they were there to spot, also to watch mechanics, not just watch what's happening with the weights, yeah. but where their knees are at. The more they worked each other with that, their form became excellent. That's where we, we sure. really saved that. But that's in our one little group. 
and like I said, the college, you've got mm -hmm. control of working with those guys to help, which you did a lot of great things. But if we could work with these kids at a younger age, how many more injuries can we cut down on and getting oh, them prepared, yeah. learning how to eat? Three things. increase of 3,000% uh, of injuries or something yeah. over the last 10 to 15 years in yeah, the youth geez. population. 3,000%, not 300%, no. 3,000%. Oh. And so that's huge. Like, yeah. And so, <clears throat> you know, the injury prevention aspect of what we do isn't usually seen or, or magnified because it's not as measurable, right? It's the only time you know that you're not a good strength coach is if you have 18 injuries, right? right. Exactly. And so people don't see it from that perspective of, wow, that guy didn't have any injuries. You know, they want to look at how fast did somebody run a 40, how far did they broad jump, how right. far did they bench, you know. And I think our biggest job that we can do is help prevent those injuries. I mean, as an athlete, I went to college and played football, and I struggled with injuries all the way through it, you know. And it was one of the most devastating things that could happen in my world at that time was not being able to play the sport that I loved. Yeah. And then led me down some other paths that weren't real positive, you know, because sure. the sport was basically taken out from underneath you. Yeah. And so – <clears throat> it, uh, if I can prevent that ha from happening with kids, I think, you know, then obviously we're winning, you know, and the more kids that we can help prevent that with, the more impact that we have. And, and I think, you know, that injury aspect is just uh, totally overlooked, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We really stress a great warm up with our stuff. I, it's the same warm up I use oftentimes at Mesa, um, dynamic stretching, you know, with some activation stuff on the floor as far as glute bridges, you know, basic, basic stuff. Yeah. And even a kid to do a glute bridge from the floor yeah. is hard sometimes yeah. to get them to do. Yeah. And it's yeah. such a simple thing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were talking about squats and cleans, but how about a push up? Yeah. Right, a good solid push up. Yeah. I mean, I maybe have had 10 kids walk through the door in the last two years that could do three sets of 10 of push ups, yep. you know, um, oh, yeah. or, and maybe that many that could really do one set of really good 10 push ups. Right. And right. so it's like, wow. Well, that's what's always amazed me too, because we've got parents that, you know, we still, after all these years, educating about strength training with kids at a younger age and what they can do and how beneficial it is. But we have parents, and understandably, their job is to protect the kids. But we've got parents and coaches telling these kids not to work out <laughs> until they're older. Yeah. You know, don't get under that bench press because they shouldn't do it. And yet they're having them perform countless push-ups and their form is incorrect. Their body's in the wrong position. Their shoulders. Forward, right? Yeah, they're, they're all off and they can't even do that. But they don't, they don't think twice about watching them do a bunch of crappy push-ups yeah. <laughs> where they can get hurt. Because it's okay, instead of getting under a 15 pound bar or 20 pound bar mm -hmm. to do bench presses for 10 or 12 good controlled reps. Yeah. Why that's a problem. So I think, I think that the whole aspect of, you know, being scared to have their kids train, but they're going to put them in a sport. And I, from what I've read is that there's 10 times more force being produced in the playing atmosphere yeah. than there can ever be produced in the weight room. Because one, you're in a controlled environment. You know exactly where your body is. Two, you've got this thinking process that starts happening, right? And so that thinking process minimizes the amount of force that you can really produce. Because when they're out there just reactive and not thinking and not going oh, yeah. through that process, their bodies are going to produce way more force. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. And so it's it's interesting. Interesting that if to me that parents aren't realizing that of course it's education that we have sure. to just keep pumping them with but at the same time like just think about that concept like this kid's running down a field trying to make a move on somebody or a court or whatever else they don't know where their body's going they don't really yeah. know where their feet are going to go they don't know what that opponent's going to do right and so they have all these reactive things that they have to try to uh, uh, take in and then put out the right yep that response where sure. in a weight room and a training setting, you know exactly where your foot's moved going. Yep. You know yep. exactly where your hand's going. You know, there's very rarely times where we, and really it's only our advanced kids that we really do maybe some type of reactive type training. Right. 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 It's a lot well, more controlled. That's for sure. Well, like we, we go to drills and even like a, an agility drill and make it more reactive. Like a, they're a chase drill or something like sure. that. And you can hear the difference on their court, like in their feet, just in, how quickly things get. So it's sure. like, man, think of that. Or like a volleyball girl jumping and trying to react somewhere. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, man, think of all that force coming down. They got to absorb and be applied to get somewhere. To get they somewhere. don't know how over time 
it's just wear and tear. It's going to beat them up. Yeah, the only deceleration work we're going to get is when they actually try and stop for change. Yeah. And nobody's oh. working. And there's no level change happening with them, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, their level change is their knee shooting forward. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's and all insane. of those things have to go. And that's that's where that controlled environment makes a difference on our movement. We talked about the transition even with Coach Dawson doing some of those things where controlled change of direction things mm -hmm. uh, or chaos drills. You know, there's both. Sure. We've got certain things with cones. We go to certain drill and we move. And the other things are thrown off. That's where we're running into problems. But there's a transition of getting it. And that's understandably what we're trying to do as strength conditioning coaches is really teach them mechanics of where they're going and why. And they get to learn what's happening. We've always called control the melon where that kid <laughs> that can't control, you know, the big head. They're going through and most of them can't control it. They get to the side, they change direction, but they drop, but their body still sways before they come back. Sure. And learning to control the core, get them tight and move into position, that's a training process that makes a big difference. And when they're on that steady, we get it. We've talked before about the football players that can move great, they're making cuts, and now they, they don't do any of that work because they're now they're doing track, which is great because mm -hmm. they're going to get faster. Sure. But you take that, that strong, powerful engine and get them even faster but no deceleration work or change of direction. And what happens then when they're going to come back into it? Well, we get them the first week of summer conditioning, and these are the kids that could move well, that now are faster, they can't control, can't deceleration, and they're falling all over out there on the field, mm -hmm. which is why we have them do it a lot of times with tennis shoes instead of cleats. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about it. If they slide and go down, yeah. no big deal. Mm -hmm. Rather than cleat grabbing poor mechanics because sure. they haven't done it, and then now they're destroying their knees. Yeah, that's what I used to tell the kids at the school. We'll do these in tennis shoes. I don't want your cleats on. Keep them humble, too. But yeah, it, it, the, the shoes will tell us if you're doing something wrong. Yeah. If you're doing it with cleats, usually that can mask some of your mistakes, right? Sure. But that also is what you talk about is catching and then having an injury. But yeah. that shoe, if they're slipping, then they're not playing their foot right, chances are. you know, yeah. Or it, it can slow that drill down to a point where they have to have a little bit more control of their body hopefully sink into their deceleration a little bit more you yep. know yep. Um, i just you know i tell somebody to get in a ready position and their athletic stance is here it's like that's ready yeah like what are you reacting to you know yeah like so we talk about bending and getting down sure. and low and getting your butt back you know yeah. and uh and taking that stress out of the knees on top of it and, but most kids can't hardly get there, No, yeah. you know, until you train them for a f few weeks, months, you know, however, it takes a while for some more than others, obviously, but sure. yeah, it's, uh, well, we talked earlier about just getting a basic hip hinge and how to move and how long, how much work yeah. that can take to teach them to do something that's so basic and it's so essential mm -hmm. for athletics. But it takes time. It's, it's the number one thing that we teach, uh, you know, at our gym. We teach our warm up and stretching. But when we start resistance training, the number one thing on our board is RDLs. Yeah. Number two is push ups. Yeah. <laughs> number three is a hamstring stretch, right? Oh yeah. And, and work through the hips. Um, yep. You know, core slash hamstring stretch yep. that we use. And and I felt, you know, when I was putting my programming together, because we we follow a. a, a a leveled system that goes through multiple phases is what did, what was the foundation that we needed to move on to eventually get a kid to do cleans yeah you know sure. yeah to me that was my my ultimate athletic lift right now is yeah. how can i what what stages do we need to build up to get them be able to do cleans and so you know you take that clean work that movement break it down you know, and into the different pieces. And so that's basically how our workout builds up. You know, yeah. it's taking those pieces awesome. and slowly putting those pieces together to where they can do a hand clean, you yeah. know, and they hand clean with dumbbells before they, or a medicine ball before they do dumbbells. Yeah, I remember that. Those and they do, ball. Yeah, they do the dumbbells before they do the barbell, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we try to make progressive stages to everything that we do so that – yeah, you're teaching a different movement, but the, hopefully within a, a short amount of time, they can transition those movements from one to the next. Yep. Yeah. And, um, you know, eventually our level threes and fours in our power program, which we really haven't designed right yet because we really don't have kids that get there, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, yet, okay. it, uh, is going to be including snatches and split jerks and the other lists, you know, sure. but man. That's, a, that's a, those are advanced movements for a high school kid or even mm -hmm. a younger kid to do. So they're way at the end of our pro. Somebody would have to be in our program probably for over a year to get to them. That's yeah, good. yeah. I'm glad you said it because that's 
again, you know, those of you who've been with us, I'm impatient, get impatient because I'm trying to work a time and getting to that point. You have to, once you can get that down, you're safe. But that's where a lot of them will, or you get an RDL, you start working that, or I see progression, they'll put a bar in their hand too quickly. And then as soon as they do that, first thing they do is start reaching for the floor. Mm -hmm. They completely forget about the hinge and what they're doing. Yeah. The mechanics are all. So it is a progression, and you need to find that part. And that's where, you know, that, that progression of just the body first, trying to get it back, with the med ball, trying to get it in mm -hmm. position, work the dumbbells, the bar, and then, you know. Well, and that's training, progress. right? Progress training is a progressive and regressive process, right? Yeah. And that's where most people get mistakes. Why are people getting hurt in weight rooms? They're not progressing, right? Or maybe they did progress initially, but then they take a break, and they come back in and try to start – right where they're at right. rather than regressing back down sure. and rebuilding back to that point right yep. they're gonna get hurt yep. you know the same thing is gonna happen in our weight rooms with the with kids or athletes is if you don't progressively build up when people do hand cleans in the first program one i'm like where do you have to go now yep. right yeah where are you gonna go in three months you just gonna keep having them do hand cleans every month right. you yeah. know yeah. and two nobody's ready very few yeah very few, 1%, and that's the kids that have already worked with somebody like that in middle school or high school, us, sure. you know, that are able to or, or are at a point where they are even close to being able to that yeah. You yeah. know, they can't front squat, they can't hip hinge, they can't even upright row, let's say, you know, and somebody has them doing hand cleans the first week of their program. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, wait a minute. I know. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. And like you said, you know, that, that regression part is essential because even with our, some of our better athletes, they get to a point, there's always something they're off and they're going and, and you've got to back and say, you know what, we're going to drop this back down. Here's what we're going to do with the farm and get it. You know, otherwise, you're not doing your job. My best athletes yeah. can get better off of our Foundation One well, training. Yeah. Our Foundation <laughs> One program. I can get better off of it, you know? Yeah. Well, hanging yeah. fruit. Yeah. Well, and, uh, then you progress to a certain point. Then you come back and rebuild. Yeah. You know? And watch and one, see how much progress you've made from that point that you started at. So build some confidence, right? Yeah. Two, there's always a little movement things that either makes sense better after you've done the hand clean maybe yeah. yeah you know or they say man we found out that his front squat is weak that's that's his limiter he's not able to catch weight he's not able to get underneath it you know where all right so maybe he'll put more emphasis on his front squat when he comes around, you know? and we'll have a better number to shoot for too all right well we were only able to clean 200 pounds you know but we felt like you pulled 250 well yeah. But we need to be able to front squat 250, if not 275. Yeah, because you, you know, in order to absorb that. Right? Yeah. And so until you can get to that that level, you're not going to ever hand clean 250. Yeah. With good form, sure. Yeah. You might power clean it per se, right? Yeah. But you're never going to clean it, right? Yeah. And so, you know, I think that's a big part of it too. Is just understanding kind of where you're at, and then all right, where am I weak? That'll show up. Tell us a lot about about where your weaknesses are, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also the imbalances, right, that are created in sports. You know, the one-legged movements or the baseball player that takes so many hacks one way. Right. Bilateral movement may not be the best thing for him. Oh, yeah. So why not regress back down to our yeah. unilateral stuff, you know, and, and start and start moving? Sure. So it's uh, we're bringing a little closer. I keep backing up. Yeah, no, you're okay going in. I got some background over there. Make sure you get in the noise. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, and that's where we, get, you know, as much as you can get that, and I think the coaches, especially our younger coaches that are out there learning, or the, the interns and students who want to get in this field, I think the important part is, I think you've touched on it quite a bit, is. We've got to look at our, our primary function is to cut down on injuries in kids and really try to keep that up. And by looking for these things and knowing where we're at of getting that foundation, it may be because you've got a 12-year-old or I've got a 17-year-old. doesn't matter where they're at. We still have to check where they're about to the basics. Because we got kids, like you said, Nebraska freshmen coming in. And we had to re you know, we always ask, well, what do you squat? Okay, great. Well, we always know. Let's cut that in half. Let's see where they're at. Mm -hmm. And then we adjust from there. Because a lot of them were just upset that that was going down. But that also worked for us in the weight room. When they were working out, they wanted to keep trying to progress. And then they wanted to go a little heavier than what was on their workout or what they were supposed mm -hmm. to do. So I would knock it down lower than what they were required to do. 
until they learn, oh, yeah, i got to pay attention and we're going to have to set this up and go. Yeah. And it, right away it would fix where they had to do. Okay, yeah, i got to pay attention to this and we we're right back because nobody, none of the guys wanted to get lower weight than they were supposed to. Tell you to. what, we'll have a kid do a barbell RDL, right? They've built up to a point where we put yeah. a barbell in their hands. Yeah. I see them make a mistake or they or we have to coach them multiple yep. times to yep. maintain yep. position. Yep. All right. Put the barbell up, I'm putting dumbbells back in your hands. Oh, oh, yeah. You know, it's like they died. <laughs> you know, something got taken away from them. But I'm like, until I, I don't have to coach you every rep on this movement pattern, I'm not going to have you lift that heavier weight and increase the risk for you getting hurt. Yeah. You know, we're working with as young as eight years old, you know, yeah. young kids. And then very few of them are ever using a barbell, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Right? Most of our stuff is all dumbbell body weight oriented. But a kid's been with us for a year. Year, they're probably using a 15 pound barbell and starting to learn some deadlifts or some RDLs. You know, that's some basic stuff. That I realize it's like it's not. We're not saying you're picking up a 45 pound barbell and then you're loading yeah, weight yeah. on it. You know, there's different barbells, but I don't think a lot of people know that either. Yeah, it's like there's not a shame to be using a barbell because it's, it's 15 pounds. And if that kid can do it dang well, what's to say they can't go up to a 45 or more? So I think it's just relative and information, like you were saying earlier too. But, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the people don't know that there's yeah. When you see lifting, everybody thinks that you're in a pile of barbell on their yeah. the kids' back and make a lift, right? Yeah. yeah. When you do weight training, yeah, but we don't do. We don't hardly. I I don't even have. I have maybe one high school kid that does back squats right now. Yeah. Well, you know, sure. back squats is like our level three strength movement. Like we don't put that as an emphasis at, at all. Yeah. You know, and to me, front squats more important to learn because again, we want to try to get to that hang clean. Yep. You know, and get oh, to yeah. that level where they can understand that yeah, too. Yeah. It's safer, you know. There's, and so like we don't, we don't. I don't do a bunch of back squatting with my athletes yet. Yeah. You know, they can build to that point. Absolutely. Is it a good exercise? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah 100%, right? Yeah. There's nothing bad about this. But the, again, a progressive process to that point. Because you're looking at kids' backs and they're crooked. Yeah. And then so some people will go load them with a squat. Yeah. And, you know, their yeah. butts will be all the way over to one side. And it's like, what is that doing with the pressure on that spine and those vertebrae and those discs, you know? Yeah. It's creating a mess. The only yeah. thing that worried about is just how deep you're going. They're not even paying attention to anything else. Yeah. Happening. Yeah. Not checking the foot placement. I'm yeah. seeing where there's one weight under. They're not there. even cueing them good to get deeper, right? Nothing. Pull your knees out. Yeah. We'll drop them up real yeah. quick, right? Yeah. Or yeah. Just, get, just get lower. Get lower. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. And so it's. Uh, it drives me insane. I think that uh, that hardcore strength coach mentality yeah. is something of the past. Yeah. Okay. You know, for the most part. I yeah. think, you know, obviously we're in there to motivate kids and we want to get some uh, extra energy out of them from time to time time you know yeah. but i think uh yeah hopefully that that type of mentality is, is starting to die because there's a whole educational part of that process that needs to take pay, place yeah. to help these kids get to a level where they're 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 really functional yeah yeah i think that's a key yeah. It's just getting them functional, and functional means they just can handle the stress of what they're doing. And start not having to think about how to bend right, right? Their body yeah. reacts to it and versus just having it become a process of thought. Yeah. yeah. It's like telling kids, get in an athletic stance or getting yourself ready to go and move. Most of them don't even know how to get in that position. Yeah. No, it's scary, right? Their feet are off, they're leaning too far, or squatting down low. I, I've been doing four week camps at the rec center, and it takes about that fourth week before kids can actually get their back flat and push their yeah. butt out, right? Yeah. yeah. And we do cat and cow drills and I'll do cat and cow and have them fill the one position, do a hip pushback, you know, sure. from that quad position. Yep. I'll have them get against the wall and try to find the wall with their butt, you know. And yep. God, it's, it it's like amazes me years. how hard it is to yeah. teach that. And yeah. to me, oh, yeah. the hip hinge is the most important sure. movement that yeah. we need in sports. Yeah. You know, it's more important than a squat to me. A squat, I think, to me, in my mind, is more of a deceleration thing. So, it, mm -hmm. you know, it's important. But to the, the, be able to hip hinge to be able to start in a good athletic stance and take off yeah. Yeah. you know it's I think it's one of the most important that's not talked about much yeah I think that talks about imbalances because if someone's used to squatting obviously that's probably the more developed side more so quad dominant, they don't know maybe. how to then yeah that may just be something natural that they need to I've almost seen that even at my prep school it's like almost the sixth grade seventh grade I can get them to understand how to hinge better than my high school kids 
Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's just because they're sitting more and the kids are moving around more, but it's like, man, it's like Hunchback and Notre Dame versus like the other kids, they can understand yeah. a little better. So yeah, it's like, maybe their body hasn't been in that position for as yeah, long, right? Yeah. yeah. And they're, and then if you get them at that age, like you're talking about, man, it's like, it's just, it would probably feel better by the time they're high school level. Their bodies have to feel so much better. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think, you know, if they can't hip hinge, a ton of stress is get thrown into their knees. Yeah. You know, and, and so I feel like, yeah, to me, I did. Between, you know, what's one of the number one things you hear people complain about? Knee pain. Well, the first thing you see people do when they get in an athletic stance or squat is their knees just throw forward, right? And their hips don't go anywhere. No. And so, um, yeah, that's something that I've, you know, really put an emphasis on is watching where that knee position is in relationship to the ankle. And I hardly want any type of forward motion of that knee in, in front of the ankle, you know, um, and, and try to get as much tension to the posterior chain as possible. And the outside of the leg, you know, rotating knees out is something that six years ago I never even heard about as a strength coach at a college, right? And we were, I was having a discussion with a student about supple leopard and his concepts with squatting versus somebody else's concepts with squatting and he's talking about rotating the the hips and the screwing motion back into the ground right and he's out and man all of a sudden that clicked in my head you know and then I started watching my kids you know squat and how their knees go out right and how man I felt if somebody pull their knees out their, their depth would be there right then you yeah, know, yep. and the stress would be places where it needs to be. You know, that ilial tibial band, that IT yep. band, yep. Yep. Yeah. huge ass rubber band that's designed to hold the force, right? Yeah. And we're trying to put it in our patella tendon. Yeah. <laughs> that's where most of it's going. That's a good way to think. <laughs> you know? yeah. For those basic things, that's where, you know, we're always getting. I mean, I'm, not, I'm still 35 years now in the industry. Still always learning stuff and picking up. You have to keep open-minded and go to these things and listen to them. And that's yeah. where you learn by going through. Because you can see kids over and over and all of a sudden you talk to somebody else. They have this thing that clicked and dead. And, oh, of course it is. And yeah, yeah, I tell you what, go. that's what I learned a ton at the college, you know, having discussions with the students. Oh, well, yeah, something yeah. they read or discovered and then they wanted to talk to me about it, yeah, right? And I was like, thing. I'm interested too. Let's yeah. talk about it. Let's, Pierre you Mark. Know? Yeah, it's Pierre, Pierre Mark, Mark, right? Yeah. God, that kid was, uh, he'd yeah. always bring good information. Yeah. In, huh? I remember so I learned a ton from my students. For a while. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would learn gross. a ton from them. So, you yeah. know, that was one aspect I really miss about the college is that interaction yeah, with the sure. students, you know, those yeah. kids learning and, oh, you yeah. know, being so excited about it too, yep. that yeah. they want to come in and just talk to you about it. And man, you need to have some good conversations, you know, oh, definitely. Um, the competitive side of, of college sports I miss, um, sure. you know, I, I get pretty intense at times and I've that I had to mellow that out with my new yeah. role. Yep. And so um, yeah. I couldn't get as fired up as I used to get at my college football players, right? No. And so, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's, so that part of, you know, you miss, but I definitely don't miss the headaches that I'd, I'd leave the room with after those days. Oh, yeah. right? no <laughs> no well, that's what's nice about doing your own thing too. Now you can, you know, you can adjust set things that you want to do, advance as you want to do, grow mm-hmm. as you want to, add classes, not, and like we talked about trying to get progressions of, of kids and levels of workout. There's, there's always that intensity where Bobby even when he first came out trying to get set up with these athletes of not understanding why so many of these kids didn't understand to keep pushing and get where you need to go they were okay with just the basics going in Mm -hmm. you know that we understand that you know in my NO has taught our kids is we typically have two different athletes that come into us the one that just wants to play participate and take part and you know learn and and that's great Mm -hmm. or those that tell me they want to win and those who want to win we have different expectations for you sure if you're going to do that then that's not later you go this or you're mad because i'm i'm on you about something it's because Uh, you wanted it i saw something in you so we're going to be a little tougher we're going to get through this we have different expectations you've got to get your meals you got to do this Mm -hmm. it's a big picture if you want this end goal Absolutely. You've got all these things ahead of us. And those that are just doing basic stuff and going and okay, well, that's okay. But we also learn that those kids that say they weren't, they start getting involved. They start getting better. They start feeling better. They've got confidence. So the confidence more. starts building. They want right? to get to that. And that's and they, where all that happens. They feel like then they can maybe get to that point. Yeah. I think a lot of times before that, they're not confident enough to think that they can get that point. So I'm going to settle for this, yeah. you know, and be all right with this. But I think once they start strength training and start building some of that, you know, one, the confidence gets built. But two, natural strength starts being built. Yep. You want to make a difference in your kid's sport. Yeah. I mean, don't, don't travel them around the country to multiple tournaments and play oh, yeah. 
a sport more and more and more, right? Strength training, right? Get them stronger, get them more powerful, get them more flexible. Yeah, you know, the flexibility aspect of things will make you faster. Yeah. And, you know, it'll give you more energy because you're not fighting yourself within, you know? And it just, I have kids, I can't touch my toes. You're 10. Yeah. yeah. You're 10. Yeah. Like, you can't touch your toes. Yeah. Exactly. Like, kid, go down for a caterpillar crawl. I can't get my hands to the ground. Well, yeah. bend, bend your knees as much as you need to. Well, then yeah. they walk up. They seriously only can walk like six inches, you know? Yeah. And it's uh, it's just wow, but I think some of that comes back to that hip hinging again. Oh, you yeah. know, not being able to bend through the yeah, hip rather sure. than bending that the spine. And so I, I always say that they're low right they sit low rider style. Yeah. Right? yeah. In yeah. class they're low rider style. Yeah. Yeah. Their hips are tucked underneath yeah. you and they just freeze uh, up, right? You gotta find that phrase that you click for. <laughs> I definitely think, yeah, that where some people are missing the boat as far as how to get their kids better. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. You know? Well and, and I think coach, you know, we've talked about it a little bit, we're gonna be doing more on this on on overtraining and what happens with these kids, but also the overuse injuries that we're seeing way too much. And most of it is coming from these kids you and year round athletics, the mm -hmm. same sport year round. They're overdeveloping certain muscle groups, they're neglecting others, their imba imbalances are being created. They get more and more uh, they're baseball players that are always doing that thing. One side, yeah. what do you think's happening? We're getting so strong on one side, neglecting the other side completely. What's happening to the neck and the spine and shoulders? Uh, we've got to get that balance put in there. And just having them do that same sport year round all the time. And and I'm not against specializing, but boy, if you're specializing in that sport, and as a parent, you're not enforcing getting them involved in a strength program and getting them to where the mobility to handle the stress of doing that, you're doing your kids a disservice. I mean, that's where the injuries, and that's the big part. You've got to you're, yeah, if you're going to specialize in a sport, you're obviously want to be pretty. You're pretty serious about it, right? And so, if you're specializing in a sport and you're serious about it, and you're not doing strength training, how serious really are you? Yeah. You know, are you are you then a, just a, a, a trophy chaser? You know, or are you really seeing the bigger picture, the longer term? You know, long term athletic development, right? That's our oh, new yeah. term, right? Yeah. Are you seeing the bigger picture with that? You know, and so, and if they're not having strength training happen, I do not feel they're seeing that bigger picture. Right? No. I mean, it's just and most of them won't last. I mean, that's what we see the trophy, the trophy chaser going through their eighth grade. They want that championship. They're doing mm -hmm. this. Well, bottom line is you do it. we had a, an athlete, baseball player, same kind of thing, playing all year round, was going through, having shoulder problems, finished, got through rehab, and he was ready to go. He wanted to go all-star and set. But mobility was terrible, had no strength around the rotator cuff and supportive. Posterior chain was terrible. And so I had to sit down with his folks and say, look, here's what's going on. And yes, good player, he's pitching, all that's fine. However, he will not last into high school and go on to that. So he needs to take time now to condition, get ready to go, so he can handle the stress. But even once you're there, you can't do seven weeks of conditioning and you're, you're there and you're set. Mm -hmm. You're going to play your round. You're going to keep playing ball. You're going to keep pitching. You have to keep this up all the way through. It's well, uh, yeah, especially with activity levels, right? And poor kids, it's not their fault. Right? It's their culture. They get blamed for being lazy a lot, but it's not their fault. It's it's our culture. And, and they are just, they most of them, 99% of them, don't do enough activity outside of sports or even around their house doing yard work, right? Yeah. yeah. To become strong enough to maintain. Where 20 years ago, kids were more active. They were riding bikes, swimming, climbing on gym sets, whatever, you know? Yeah. And they were building that natural strength up and helping offset that. Well, they also weren't playing sports year around as much, right? No. Yeah. So now yeah. we have two in you got the two ends of the spectrum happening. They're not, not active at all, playing a tons of sport, you know? Or maybe they only play one or two sports, but they don't they're over here unactive. Yeah. Well, and then they go to go play this sport. Oh. And they get hurt because they're so inactive. I've been doing anything. Yeah. I mean, injury prevention and just uh, really overall health. Like I try not to emphasize like we work with we work with kids, right? We don't work with athletes because I don't. Sometimes I don't want that that title to always be connected to them. Sure. You were a kid that plays sports, therefore you're athletic. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so we work with kids that need these things to help them become be healthy yep. to yeah. have a higher quality of life as they get older yep. you know um, so that they can go hike on a trail with their family and not worry about passing out you know yep. Yep. to me I used to tell the kids at the college they'd take my beginning weightlifting class or my intermediate weight and I'd tell them this was probably one of the most important classes you could take at this university yeah and they laugh at me a little bit but I'm like this is what's going to provide you more freedom than anything else yeah. 
Correct. You know, if you're in good shape and you can follow some of these protocols consistently throughout your life, you're, you're, you're not limited to being like, oh, I don't know if I can go do that hike, you know, with my family. I don't know if I am going to have the abilities to do this or that. Yeah. You know, working out gives us a freedom yeah. because we have, we're fit enough to say, I can go do whatever I want. Yep. You know, yeah, yeah maybe exactly. some things are going to take me a little longer than others, obviously. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not scared, you know. Yeah. And so, to me, the overall picture of the whole thing is we got to create healthier humans or else we're going to have some serious problems like we're kind of experiencing right now, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, and it's, it's to me, it's kind of scary watching these young kids come in and the levels that they're at and the strength that they have and yeah. the way that their bodies don't move or don't move, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I'm, it's, it was worrisome. Oh, it definitely is. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. A lot of great tips, I think, going into it. And I think, how can people get a hold of you? If you're... Uh, you know, you can find me on uh, Facebook uh, under LTI. We have a Facebook page. We do, uh, you know, a lot of Instagram stuff, LTI. Yep. Um, you can, uh, you know, reach out to Bob. He'll give me my email. Okay. Um, Good. And then, uh, yeah, we can go for, go from there. So Perfect. Yeah, appreciate well, the time. I'll make sure all the links and stuff are put in there for him, too, as well, because he's a great resource. And like I said, learned a lot. You know, Bobby learned a lot from while he was up there at school and working through that, that part of it. And then I'm, I'm excited that you've got your own spot now and getting things yeah. going and working with those younger kids. That means those kids are going to have a lot bigger thing, better chance of staying safe as they get involved and being active and just feeling good about themselves and doing things. Yeah. So really I appreciate, appreciate you coming on. Appreciate you guys having me, man. Yeah, Wish great. we had some warmer weather for you oh, here, but we're, we're okay. It worked out. <laughs> and hopefully we can still get up. I, mean, I still want to get back up to Grand Junction and yeah. Yeah. Fall or find a time to get up there and do it. It'd be great. Your eyes are always you. welcome. Come so in we'll and check it out. Hang out. Right, yeah, that's for sure. Appreciate you guys following. Make sure any comments, questions, go ahead and put those in there. The links, like I said, for Coach will be in there. So you can find him, follow him. He's got a lot of great, great videos and tips on the kids in the gym, things that they're doing, balance, movement, speed, power work. Uh, and so just keep in, keep expanding your knowledge. I appreciate being part of the Strength of America family. And we'll see you on the next podcast. See ya. Uh, Thanks, guys. Cool.